just here to make you think. Today we're going to talk about Philadelphia's own the right. JBM First Lady, Queen Pen, and Gangster, Miss Thelma Wright. Now, back in the 70s, Thelma was a nice looking female, went to school, ran track, you know. 1977. She met her future husband, which was Jackie Wright, a well-known, high-top drug wholesaler. That means he had cocaine and heroin for wholesale at a top level. And he was well connected with the with the black mafia of the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s. So they met, he was from North Philly, left and common area, whatever, you know. They got married like in the early 20s, they had a son like they had a son like 1982. They had a son named Jackie, if I'm pronouncing it right. And they was doing real good, handling their business. Like Bonnie and Clyde, they was hustling together. She had her own package doing her own thing. He had his own thing doing his own thing. But one day, she got a phone call. You know, tragedy struck him in 19... 19- 86 August, they found her husband, the late Jackie Wright, with gunshot wounds to the head, wrapped up in a rug. So our whole thing now, she said to herself, what, I'm going to roll over and die? I got a whole son to take care of. And everybody in the circle and everybody on the streets thought Jackie left all his money, but he didn't. However, she had the phone number to the line, you know, and when she went over there to meet the connect, it was a woman, Colombian woman who built a good relationship with her, a real good relationship. This woman was nice looking, clean, kept the house clean, real quiet. She was about that money. And what happened was somehow she got killed. Somebody took out, you know, when you're that powerful in the game. And Thelma Wright, she was getting money for a long time. Transporting her run and cocaine from LA to Philadelphia. So when she met up when Aaron Jones at a Sixers basketball game, you know, they just was getting together, you know, because she was nice looking. And Aaron popped game at her, but she was already street smart. She already know who's who in the streets and who's up and coming and all that. And, you know, he spilled his G at her. Next thing you know, they get major money together. Major people. She did her time. She came home. But you would have never knew a female like her, nice looking, well dressed, well groomed, well mannered, was going from Philly to LA. I mean, taking all that money over there, flying all that money over there. I mean, because you know, back in the day, in the 70s and 80s, they weren't checking nobody for drugs. Going from state to state, especially a you know, beautiful looking woman like her, you know, but she survived all that. But she had to bust her gun too because she had to let the streets know she wasn't sweet. So she got busy. She hit a couple of motherfuckers up. She had to let people know 
because some dudes is playing with her money. So she had to let them know she handled her business. You know, and this thing about the seriousness of her role back in 86 when her dude got killed. Then she went into Aaron Jones at the Sixers game the same year. Feel what I'm saying? And that turned out to be a good relationship business wise. You just see what I'm saying? So she had to put a big girl panties on and handle her business. And this one, Philadelphia in 86, was introduced to the cocaine, crack cocaine era. So what I'm saying? She was going over to Cali to bring that back over here. And then you got all these thugs, all these gangsters in the city. You ain't hear about no females. You, I mean, don't get me wrong. My man, Joey Tunstall, my, may she rest in peace. She was up frame for getting money. So you had females in the city that was getting money. But they just was getting money in the hood. This girl was family. Right? She was going from Philly to Cali, meeting a connect. You know what I mean? Getting it for a low number. You know what I mean? And bringing it back. So she was on a whole nother different type of ball game. And then she had a squad that was, was her man's squad. Then she got with Aaron Jones. You already see what they say. Allegedly, they was, we was pushing like 500 Jones, 500 bricks in the 80s. So imagine what Thelma was pushing. I mean, she, and the thing about it back then, y'all gotta understand some youngs back then, didn't nobody know everybody business the way everybody know everybody business out here today. She was a queen, and ain't nobody know that, but set bosses and people that's on that level. And they only talked to other dudes that was on their level, unless they talked to people that was under them, but that people that was under them didn't know too much. That's why when somebody got killed back in the day, didn't nobody know where the money was at. Like, we hide the money. Because dudes that had money back in the day in Philly, they never told nobody where their stash was at. Not even their own mother. So when Jackie Wright got killed and wrapped up in the rug and all that, his woman ain't know where that money was at. She just knew that the connect was in L.A. and this was the number. And she went over there and told him what happened. But she told him she wanted to finish the business. So, you know, from the business her husband and her was doing, the husband must have told her to connect about his wife and how she moved. Because for her, her, she had to be loyal. And when the connect got killed, the female connect, she met another connect. And if I'm not mistaken, she met another female connect. Yeah, you know I mean, so like the other female cartel that was was, was Spanish, she wasn't no joke. And they claim they killed her, but they said she was putting in work too. A little boyfriend she had in, in Miami, I think, told on her, gave up. Young boy gave up, man. Suck a move. You know what I'm saying? But you know. I'm glad I could share that with y'all. I know a lot of people in Philly didn't know she was from Philly. And the thing is, she is part of a program. I believe she helped battered women. She got her own program. And I think the place is on, I came with the location. Because women that go to these locations, because I knew a female that was in one of the programs and one day was driving by and she said, that's what a, I was at in that place right there. But the way they got these places, you arrive right past them. But Thelma Wright owns one of them. And the reason why I know about the second one, because I once had lived in an apartment and it was up the street. It was a halfway house on the other half of it, the other side of it is for women who went through a lot of things. I think domestic violence, that's why a lot of you, a lot of men and women, y'all gotta stop the domestic violence all around the world because females go through things after they're assaulted by 
their ex-boyfriend or boyfriend or husband or whatever or a significant other they go through a lot they go they get traumatized and they gotta go in them shelters that's for bad at women and they get them houses and all that but a lot of females go through a lot and children go through a lot by seeing it you know but Thelma Wright owns one of them. And I'm proud of her. She's out here doing the right thing. Her son works with and everything. Google her, Thelma Wright, and watch the full story of the Queen Pen of Philadelphia that dealt with the JBM, or actually with the JBM line. It was the connect at one point. Stay woke, made the change, update solution for outdated problems. Remember, Philly trenches, Philly trenches, hats. Shirts, hoodies, sweatsuits, cups, mugs, all that's coming soon. Philly trenches. Remember, Philly trenches, Philly trenches.